الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد. So in our previous class, we had begun discussing the brief interpretation and explanation of some of these noble and beneficial verses. الحمد لله القدير الباري ثم صلاته على المختار. وبعد حاك سيرة الرسول منظومة موجزة الفصول Then all praise and thanks is to Allah Al-Qadir The one who is all powerful and strong I be able to do all things Al-Bari The creator and the originator And the one who has formed and brought everything in this life The one who has formed and shaped and created And brought everything into existence Subhanahu wa ta'ala Then he sent the salat Meaning praising and mentioning the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the best manner with the noble angels that are high and lofty and nearest to Allah Azza wa Jal upon the chosen one who was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is Al-Mustafa, Al-Mushtaba, Al-Mukhtar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the best of all mankind and the seal of all prophets he said after that here is the biography of the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam take it and learn it, it's beneficial I have placed it in poetic form summarized just for you in chapters to make it easy to memorize and to learn then, after this, he begins with the first point on the timeline of the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is his birth. Which is his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mawliyuhu fi Ashir al-Fadili, Rabiyin al-Awwari Aam al-Fadili. And he mentioned now that his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was on the 10th of the distinguished month, which is Rabi' al-Awwal, also in the year of the elephant, clarifying the time of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that distinguished month, the month of Rabi' Al-Awwal, the month of Rabi' Al-Awwal, and the year of the elephant, and the year of, of the elephant. And this is something that is affirmed and established that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wurida am al-fil, and this has been connected by al-Hakim fi Al-Mustadraq from the hadith of Ibn Abbas and radiyallahu anhuma authentically that he said Wurida al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam am al-fil that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was born in the year of the elephant and the story of the elephant is well known with Abraha whenever he came to destroy the Kaaba because of some events that occurred with a church that he was trying to build in Yemen for those in Habasha for those in Habasha the Abyssinian people in, in Al-Habasha. And the story is well known. And Alhamdulillah, we have already discussed many of the details of these affairs in our previous classes in the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are recorded and we will make them available for those who want to listen and learn about the details of some of these events. But as for in these classes, then we will continue as the author has mentioned in a summarized manner, not going in to great detail. Not going into great detail. So therefore he was born in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. And likewise this has been affirmed on Ibn Abbasin and likewise on Jabir radiallahu anhuma that this was the month that he was born sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mawriduhu fi ashir al-Fadiri that he was born on the 10th of the distinguished month. And that is the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, in the year of the elephant. So this is what he's mentioning here, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on the 10th of that month. The month Rabi' al-Awwal. Then he says, لَكِنَّ مَا الْمَشْهُورُ ثَانِي أَشْرِهِ فِي يَوْمِ الْإِثْنَيْنِ تُلُوعَ فَجْرِهِ But what is well known is that he was born on the 12th, on the day of Al-Ithnayn, which is in accordance to Monday, at the rising of the Fajr of that day. Indicating here that there's a difference of opinion with regards to the exact day of that month. He's telling us here that it was on the 10th. And then he says, but what is mashhur, meaning what is well known, meaning with the people of knowledge, the majority of the scholars, they find that it is on the 12th. So the people of knowledge, they have differed with regards to the specific day. This is something that we do not know for sure. Some of the people of knowledge have mentioned it is the 10th, as he mentioned here. And the majority of the people of knowledge mentioned that it is the 12th, that he mentioned here likewise. And even others have mentioned that it's the 8th. 
So it's not certain about that day. This is something that we do not know for sure. But the majority of the scholars, they mention the 12th, and this is the strongest position and Allah knows best. As for being certain about that, this is something only Allah knows. And uh, one will say about this, Allah knows best. So the strongest position and the one that is well known and the majority of the scholars, they find that it is on the 12th day of Rabi al-Awwal. As for fi yawm al-ithnayn tulu'a fajrihi, as for on yawm al-ithnayn, which is Monday, then there is no difference of opinion about that. Rather, there is a consensus. Ibn Kathir, in his great work, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, mentioned a consensus of the scholars, Al-Ijma', Ijma' ulama that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born on yawm al-ithnayn, which is in accordance to Monday, which is in accordance to Monday. And it has been collected by Ali Imam Muslim, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, from the hadith of Abi Qatadata al Ansari, Radiallahu Anhu, that he said, Su'il al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an sawmi yawm al ithnayn. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked about fasting on the day of al ithnayn. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thaka yawmun. وُلِدْتُ فِيهِ وَيَوْمٌ بُعِثْتُ أَوْ أُمْزِلَ عَلَيَّ فِيهِ The Prophet ﷺ said, That is the day that I was born. And that is the day that I was sent as a prophet or that I, the revelation came to me. And the narrators, they differed about the, the expression here, but it means the same thing. So this narration here is in Sahih Muslim and it is authentic. And there's no doubt about that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed he was born on Yom al-Ithnayn. And likewise, indeed he received revelation for the first time on Yom al-Ithnayn. And likewise, it has been reported from Ibn Abbasin, radiallahu anhumah, a number of other affairs as well that have occurred on Yom al-Ithnayn. Beginning with his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and likewise, he received revelation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on Yom al-Ithnayn. And also he left Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to make hijrah on the day of al-Ithnayn. And also he arrived in al-Medina one week later on the day of al-Ithnayn. And likewise, he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on Yom al-Ithnayn. On Yom al-Ithnayn. Likewise, it's been mentioned that also the Hajr that he lifted, which will come, the mention of that, insha'Allah, for his people was on the day of al-Ithnayn and Allah knows best. So there are a number of events that occurred on Yom al Ithnayn, and from them, that which concerns us now is his birth. Like in the man Mushuru Thani Ashrihi, Fi Yom al Ithnayn Tulu'a Fajrihi, on the day of al Ithnayn, which is in accordance to Monday, at the rising of the Fajr. This has been mentioned likewise, the rising of the Fajr. But others from the people of knowledge have mentioned rather it was in the daytime. And others, they mentioned rather it was at nighttime. So this portion here is something that's not established with certainty likewise. There's a difference of opinion. Whether it was at Fajr time, or whether it was in the daytime, or whether it was in the nighttime, Allah knows best. The author here, he is mentioning that he's following the position of the Prophet being born sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that day at the rising of the Fajr. And Allah knows best. And Allah knows best. Then he says, وَوَافَقَ الْعِشْرِينَ مِنْ نَيْسَانَ وَقَبَلَهُ حَيْنُ أَبِيهِ هَانَ and that day, the day of al Ithnain, on the month of Rabi al-Awwal, in the year of Al-Fil, the year of the elephant, this was in accordance with the 20th of Nisan. Nisan is one of the solar months from the solar calendar, which we know today as April. So it was in accordance with the 20th of April. And likewise, in the year 571, in the Christian calendar, in the year 571 of the Christian calendar. So that day, the birth of the noble prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the day that Allah honored the creation with the birth of the best of all mankind, and the most noble and upright, and the most pious and righteous, the one who has the best heart, and the most pure soul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who is most beloved to Allah, azza wa jal, he was born in the year of the elephant, in the month Rabi. And awwal on a Monday, on Yom al Ithnayn, and Allah knows best, it was on the 12th of that month. And Allah knows best, it was on the 12th of that month, and that is in correspondence to the 20th day of April in the year 571 in the Christian calendar. In correspondence 
to the 20th of April in the year 571 on the Christian on the Christian calendar. This is what this portion means. Naysan is a name of the months from the solar calendar, which is in accordance to April, which is also a month from, from the solar calendar, which the Christians they use uh, they use today. Which the Christians they use today. So the year is established, and the month is established, and the day is established. As for the day of the month, whether it's the 12th or whether it's the 10th or whether it's the 8th, there's a difference of opinion about that. The people of not as they have mentioned a benefit with regards to this, the fact that this is something that's not known with certainty is an indication that there is no legislative ruling related to that. As we all know, the Prophet وسلم, he never celebrated his birthday, not before prophethood and not after prophethood. Nor did any of his companions, not Abu Bakr, nor Umar, Uthman, or Ali, radiallahu anhum, or any of them, radiallahu anhum, jami'an, and none of the tabi'een, nor the atba'at tabi'een, nor the tabi'u atba'at tabi'een, nor any of the four imams, not Abu Hanifa, not Al-Imam Malik, not Al-Imam Shafi'i, not Al-Imam Ahmad, none of them knew anything, or even heard of the mention of celebration of the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is an innovation and falsehood, and it's not a means of showing that one loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, it's in contradiction and confliction with that which he came with. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is an indication of that, because that day is not certain. Because that day is not certain. Rather, we will see, bi ta'ala, in the end of this, that most likely the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal is actually the day that he died. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu wa barakatuhu alayhi also on Yomu Ithnain. Also on Yomu Ithnain. So we continue and the author now he says, Wa qabalahu haynu abihi hana. Wa qabalahu haynu abihi hana. And before that, before that, meaning before the birth of the Prophet, Salawatullahu alayhi wa salamu haynu abihi hana. Yani jaa mawtu abihi. The death of his father came. Al hayn is al harak. Al mawt is death. Is death and his the death of his father came, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was in the womb of his mother at the death of his father, so therefore he was born an orphan. He never seen or met his father. He never spent one day experiencing the blessing and the bounty and the favor of having a father. Rather, he was born without a father, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his father left behind an inheritance for him. And it has been mentioned that he left behind five camels. And one slave, and it was a female slave, and her name was Um Ayman, Baraka al Habashiya, radiallahu anha, and she later accepted Islam. And likewise, she was from his Hawadin, those dry nurses, those people who took care of him as a baby, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but did not breastfeed him. But did not breastfeed him. Her name was Um Ayman, Baraka al Habashiya. So before he was born, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his father died. And he was left in the care of his mother. He was left in the care of his mother, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the name of his father is Abdullah ibn Abd al-Muttalib. And the name of his mother is Amina bint Wahab. Is Amina bint Wahab. His mother, her name is Amina bint Wahab. And she is from, from Bani Zuhra, the tribe of Zuhra. And as for his father, then his name is Abdullah ibn Abd al-Muttalib. And he is from Quraysh. And he is from Quraysh. So the author, he says, Now, وَبَعْدَ عَمَيْنِ غَدَ فَطِيمَ جَاءَتْ بِهِ مُرْضِعُهُ سَلِيمَ حَرِيمَةٌ لِأُمِّهِ وَعَادَتْ بِهِ لِأَهْلِهَا كَمَا أَرَادَتْ and after two years, he was weaned. He came and he was weaned. And he was uh, brought back with his nursing mother, healthy and strong, Sariman. And her name is Halima. She brought, her, she brought him back to his mother. And then she returned back to her people again, just as she had intended. So what is intended from these verses and what the author he is uh, referring to is the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after birth, he was given to a nursing mother who took him into the desert lands to raise him and to nurse him and to keep him far away from the diseases of the inner city 
and the trials and the troubles of the inner city. And likewise, for him to grow up young and strong and to be breastfed in the desert and the lands and to be raised there to be strong and to be healthy. And likewise, to learn the pure language and tongue of the Arab. Of the Arab. And this was something that was from the way of the Arab in those days. That in Mecca, because so many people are coming there from so many different lands, it was known to have diseases and the likes that would come there. And many people would get sick. So because of this, they would send their children at a very early age to nursing mothers who would take them out into the desert to keep them safe away from the sicknesses and the diseases that come with the travelers who are visiting Mecca. And likewise for them to be raised in the desert, in the, that hard land to become strong and to be, learn to be self-dependent. And likewise in order to keep their tongues pure and strong in the Arabic language and strong and fluent in the Arabic language. Because the people in Mecca, they're coming from different lands and the tongues are being mixed. So the Arab, they're very diligent to preserve their language and to preserve their tongue. Al-Arabiya, Al-Fusha. And from that is they would send their children to the desert, to be raised there at a young age. From, from them, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his breastfeeding mother, Murdi'uhu Ismuha Harima as Sa'diya. She was from the tribe of Sa'd. She was from Bani Sa'd, Harimatun as Sa'diya. And she is Harima bint Abi Dhu'ayb. Harima bint Abi Dhu'ayb. And she took care of him and raised him and breastfed him for two years. And the whole time he was in her company. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she experienced so much goodness and blessing. So much goodness and blessing came to her and her family from that time that she took custody of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever he's a little baby. So much good came to them that she realized that and recognized that and whenever it's time to take him back to his mother at the age of two, she went back with him but she wanted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to stay with them longer because of the goodness that they found whenever he was along with them. So she told his mother that, you know, it's very important for him to stay with us a bit longer. And she's trying to convince her to let Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam go back with her because it's safer for him and better for him and so on and so forth. And finally, his mother agreed and he went back. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what these lines are referring to. Again, there are many details with regards to these affairs and alhamdulillah, we have spoke on them in our previous classes, which are much more detailed with the mention of the narrations and the likes like this and the statements of the people of knowledge. And we will make the links available for you uh, for those who do not know or are not aware of them or cannot find them easily. Bi-ibnillahi ta'ala. وبعد عامين غدا فاطمة جاءت به مرضعه سليمة حريمة لأمه وعادت به لأهلها كما أرادت. So this is uh, the case here. After two years, she came back with him, حريمة سعدية, but she wanted to return with him, so she convinced his mother آمنة to let him go back. And this is what she wanted, and this is what happened. فبعد شهرين شقاق بطنه وقيل بعد أربع من سنه and after two months, then his chest was split open. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then after two months, his chest was split open. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's mentioned after four years from birth. After four years from, from birth. فَبَعْدَ شَهْرَيْنِ in شِقَاقُ بَطْنِهِ بَطْنِهِ يَعْنِ صَدْرِهِ What is intended here by بَطْن is the صَدْر. And in the بَطْن is يعني the whole front of the body, but... What is intended here is the Sadr. And he used the word button. Yani, sometimes the people who write poetry, they're forced to use different terms or different words in the lines like this so that their poetry is in accordance to those scales that we have mentioned before. So what is intended from the button here, which normally will be translated to mean belly, is Sadr, his chest, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَبَعْدَ شَهْرَيْنِ After two months, in شِقَاقُ بَطْنِهِ إن شقاق إن شق صدره أتاه جبريل فشق صدره كما في حديث أنس عند مسلم رضي الله عنه that after two months his chest was split open and it's mentioned after four years from birth and Allah knows best four years is the better opinion four years is the better opinion because it's mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at this time he was out 
with the children and they're playing and it's also mentioned in other narrations that he was out with the with the sheep in the field and with the herd in the flock so it's not possible for someone who's two to be running around taking care of the sheep and the lights like this so more probable and more likely it is at the age of four and Allah knows best in any case whenever he was a child in the custody of Harima Saadiyah Jibril, he came to him alayhi salatu wassalam and he grabbed him whenever he was with the young boys and he put him on the ground and he split his chest open, his noble chest, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he took out his heart. And then from his heart, he took out a blood clot and he said, Hada hadhu shaytani mink. And he said, this is the portion of shaytan from you, meaning the place in the heart where shaytan has the ability to whisper and to suggest and to mislead and to turn away and deviate that was taken from the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then jibril alayhi salam he cleaned the prophet's noble heart sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then he put it back in his chest he cleaned it with zamzam he cleaned his noble heart sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the water of zamzam and then he put it back and he sewed his chest back together and anas the narrator of this narration radiyallahu anhu mentioned that i see the this, the mark from the stitches on his chest. I have seen it today. I have seen it today. So one of the benefits from this is to clarify that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from a very, very early age, whenever he was a little boy, he was purified. He is purified. He has the best heart, the most noble heart, the most clean heart. And he has protection in the isma, the protection from Allah Azza wa Jal that he will never be misled or go astray or fall into deviation or shirk, or have the bad creed, or the bad belief. Rather, he was purified and kept safe from all of that. And his whole life, he always avoided and stayed away from the ways of his people. Whenever they're worshiping idols, he never touched the idol, and he never ate the food that was slaughtered for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He avoided those evil ways his whole life. And from the means of that was whenever he was a small boy, the noble angel Jibril came to him and cleansed his heart. Cleansed his heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he lived a life of purity all of his life, before and after prophethood. Before and after prophethood. And after six years and one month coming, the death of his mother occurred at Al Abwa. After the splitting of the chest, the boys, they're all with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They all ran back to Harima Sa'diyah and they're very scared and they say, Muhammadun Qutil, Muhammadun Qutil. They're all saying, oh, Muhammad was killed. Muhammad was killed because they seen the angel come because Jibril came and he came with another angel in the form of a man. And this happened whenever he cleansed his heart. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the little boys, they got scared and they ran back to Harima and they said, Muhammad's been killed, Muhammad's been killed. And whenever they went to check on him, his face had changed colors and he was very white and they knew that something had happened. And at this time, Harima became very afraid that something may happen to him and she will be held responsible. So she took him back to his mother. So she took him back, sallallahu alayhi wa to his mother. And then after this time, his mother traveled to Al-Medina so that he could visit some of his uncles from the Akhwal, which are the uncles from the mother's side, to take him to Medina to visit some of his uncles. So she did this with him, and then on the way back from Medina, there's a place between Mecca and Medina called Al-Abwa. And in this place, Amina, she became very sick and she died. She became very sick and she died. And uh, the traveling from Mecca to Medina is about seven to 10 days traveling seven to 10 days traveling. And they were traveling on those days, either on foot or on camel. And the lives like this, they're not traveling with roads. They're traveling in the middle of the harsh desert. And that area there is known as Hijaz and that desert is, is harsh. So on the journey back home, his mother died. And along with them was Um Ayman, Barakah al Habashia, and she cared for him and brought him to his Grandfather. So at the age of six, his mother died. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he was in the custody of Um Ayman. And Um Ayman, radiallahu anha, she brought him back to Mecca to his grandfather. 
وجده للأبي عبد المطلب بعد ثمان مات من غير كذب and then his grandfather who loved him dearly and respected him in a great manner and honored him and kept him close and would even honor him sometimes in the gatherings even more than his own children bringing him close to him and letting him sit in the most noble and honorable places in his gatherings that even some of his children would not sit he died at the age of eight at the age of eight so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born with no father. He never met his father. And he only had his mother. And by the time he was six, his mother died. And then he was in the custody of his grandfather, who loved him dearly. And then by the time he's eight, likewise, his grandfather died. His grandfather from his father's side. And he, meaning that this is his grandfather from his father. Because his father is Abdullah ibn Abd al-Muttalib. So Abd al-Muttalib was his grandfather and he took it care of him after the death of his mother all the way until he died whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was eight years old and this is no lie, something that is affirmed. Then, ثُمَّ أَبُوْ طَالِبٍ الْعَمُّ كَفَلْ خِدْمَتَهُ ثُمَّ إِلَى الشَّامِ رَحَلْ And then his uncle, Abu Talib al-Am. Abu Talib al-Am. Al-Am is the uncle from the father's side. And Abu Talib, he is the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he is the uncle from his father and they were blood brothers. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a number of uncles. He has a number of uncles sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but Abu Talib, he was the, the brother of his father, Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. That was his akhun shaqiq. The akh shaqiq is the brother that has the same mother and father. Because... Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, the father of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a number of brothers. He has a number of brothers. But Abu Talib was his brother from his father and mother. But Abu Talib was his brother from his father and mother. So Abdul Muttalib, he knew this. And he knew that this is the closest to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in blood relations and ties of kinship. So therefore... He knew that he loved him most and he would care for him most. So Abdul Muttalib, he loved him greatly and he wanted to leave him in the guardianship of the one who would take care of him the best. So therefore he chose Abu Talib because Abu Talib is his uncle from his father who is his closest uncle because he is a blood brother to his father. And likewise Abu Talib as well, he loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dearly and he cared for him and he was in his guardianship all the way until after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received prophethood. So now he says, Thumma Abu Talib al Amu Kafil. After his grandfather died at the age of eight, Abu Talib, his uncle, from his father's side, took his guardianship and took care of him and looked out for him. Thumma il Shami Rahel. And then Abu Talib he went to Asham. Because as we know from the life and the way of the Arab in those days is that they would have two trips in the winter and in the summer. They would have trips in the winter and trips in the summer. Trips of a tijara, trips of business. And they would go to Sham and they would go to Yemen. In the summertime they would go to Sham and in the wintertime they would go to Yemen. Who knows something about this? Li'ilafi Quraysh, ilafihim. رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالسَّيْفِ رِحْلَةَ Any traveling. الشِّتَاءِ وَالسَّيْفِ In the time of الشِّتَاءِ Winter and the time of الصَّيْفِ In the winter time they would go to Al-Yemen for business opportunities and they would take along with them many items from Mecca and go to Al-Yemen and purchase many different items and bring them back to Mecca and sell them and make money. And likewise in the summertime they would go to Asham and they would take with them items from Mecca and then they would trade and make commerce and also purchase items in Hashem and bring them back to Mecca in this manner. So Abu Talib, he was going to Shem. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this time, he was 12. And this is after he was 12 years old. And the affair that happened with Bahira, the Rahib, the Christian monk, is very well known. So at this time, Abu Talib, he's going on this journey. But he has great pity and care and worry for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not want to leave him behind in Mecca by himself with no one to care for him. 
So therefore he brought him along with him on the journey. Therefore he brought him along with him on the journey. He's only a 12 year old boy. But because Abu Talib knows that there's no one to care or look out for him and he, because he's afraid and scared for him that something might happen to him, he did not want to leave him alone. Rather, he wanted to have him by his side the whole time so he could keep a good eye on him and know that he's safe. This is all from the care and the love that Allah had placed in the heart of those who had guardianship over the Prophet wasallam, looking out for him, looking out for him. And also there is as well an indication to this issue here in the Noble Qur'an. Who knows the verse? Did he not find you an orphan and he gave you refuge? Meaning the Prophet وسلم, he was an orphan, he was born with no father. And then by the time he's six years old, his mother died, he had no parents. But then he was left with his grandfather. And then by the time he's eight, he died likewise. But then after that, he was left also in the company of his uncle who took care of him. So although these hardships and difficulties kept coming time after time, in the beginning of his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah always had a decree for him that he would be safe and he would be kept good and that there will be someone to look out for him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So at the age of 12, he leaves out with his uncle Abu Talib to go to Sham for a business journey. And on the way there, they make it to a land called Al Busra. Al Busra, which is from the lands of Hashem. And whenever they're there on that journey, they pass by this land and they find Arahib. Arahib is one of those Christian monks who have knowledge of the book. And he's from those who worship Allah Azza wa Jal and was upon the way of Isa alayhi salam. And he, whenever he's seen him, this Rahib, his name is Bahira. And whenever they stopped and he's seen the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knew there was something special about him. And he began to ask about him. And there are many amazing stories and events that occurred at this time. Some of them are not affirmed, but Allah knows best. What is established is that no doubt there was shade following him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even some of the, the, the trees and the likes would move in his direction, bringing the shade to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the clouds were covering him wherever he goes, bringing him shade. And he, in that land, and the Bahira, he noticed that. And he seen that and he realized that this young boy, he's special. He's very special and he warned Abu Talib that you should not bring him any further because if you bring him any further, the people are going to realize and recognize who he is and they're going to know that there's something good about him and they're going to try to harm him, especially the Jews. Especially the Jews. If the Jews see the likes of this young, young boy and the, and, and the signs that he has of goodness upon him, they will really harm him. So you should send him back. So therefore he was sent back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is... Those 12 lines that we have discussed this week. And it is, in summary, on a point of timeline. So we have points here of the timeline. The first point, we have Al-Mawlid, which is the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. The second point, we have Wafatu Abihi, Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, the death of his father. And at this time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was in the womb of his mother. And the third point we have, ar -radaa, the fact that he was breastfeeding. And the fourth point we have, Shaq al-Sadr, whenever his chest was split open, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fifth point we have, Wafatu Umihi, Adad Abwa'i, death of his mother. Uh, and the sixth point on the timeline we have Wafatu Jaddihi Abd al Muttarib, the death of his grandfather. And the seventh point we have Kafalatu Ammihi Abi Talib, the guardianship of his uncle Abu Talib. And the eighth point that we have that we discussed today is Arihlatu Il Shami Ma Ammihi Abi Talib. وَفِيهَا قِصَّةُ بَحِيرَ الرَّاهِبِ The journey to Sham with his uncle Abu Talib and in it is the story of Bahira, the Christian monk. The Christian monk. So those are the eight points that we discussed today. The eight events on the timeline. You mention them in general like this. You memorize the points like this in summary and then you know the brief details. 
the birth and the death of his father. So he's born as an orphan. Then he was given to the breastfeeding mother, Harima Saadiyah. Until the age of two, he was brought back. And then he went back to the desert until the age of four, whenever Angel Jibril came and, and cleansed his heart. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he was sent back to his mother. And then they went for the journey to Medina. And at the age of six, on the return from Medina, his mother died. And then he was in the care of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. But by the time of eight, his grandfather died likewise. And then at the advice and the command of Abdul Muttalib, Abu Talib took his guardianship. And then at the age of 12, they went to Sham. This is the summary of that which we have taken today. That which we have taken today. So to read the poem again for those who want to listen. Alhamdulillah al Qadir al Bari, Thumma Salatuhu al Al Muqtari, Wabadu Haka Sirat al Rasuri, Mazumat al Mujazat al Fusuri. موريده في عشر الفضيري ربيع الأول عام الفيري لكنما المشهور ثاني عشره في يوم الاثنين طلوع فجره ووافق العشرين من نيسانا وقبله حين أبيه هانا وبعد عامين غدا فطيما جاءت به مرضعه السليمة حريمة لأمه وعادت به لأهلها كما أرادت فبعد شهرين شقاق بطنه وقيل بعد أربع من سنه وبعد ست مع شهر جائي وفاة أمه على الأبواء وجده للأب عبد المطلب بعد ثمان مات من غير كذب ثم أبو طالب العم كفل خدمته ثم إلى الشام رحل وذاك بعد عام اثني عشر وكان من أمر بحيرة مشتهر الحمد لله and uh, before we close, uh, a correction from the slip that happened with regards to the lineage or the name of the author. His name is Al-Qadi. The author, Ibn Abu Iz, Ibn Abu Iz, Al-Qadi Ali, Ibn Ali, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Abu Iz. Ali, Ibn Ali, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Abu Iz. So his name is Ali and his father's name is Ali and his grandfather's name is Muhammad. And then is Ibn Abu Iz. Then Ibn Abu Iz. So he was a Qadi. He was a Qadi, a judge. And Ali ibn Ali, this is the author. He was a Qadi, a judge. And Ali ibn Muhammad, he was a Qadi and a judge. Likewise. And Muhammad ibn Abu Iz, likewise, he was a judge. All of his family members, they were from the people of knowledge. And all of his ancestors, from his fathers and grandfathers, they were all from the people of knowledge. Teachers and judges and people... Uh, of religion and deen. So the author, he was raised in a family of knowledge. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our families families of knowledge and to make our lineage good and beneficial for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There will be posted today, inshallah, in the channel, a link for those who want to register for the memorization. Those who want to memorize and have their memorization checked and uh, possibly win a prize for the memorization, then they have to register. That way we know all of those noble students who intend to compete so we can make the proper preparations for you. May Allah grant you all success. Had that was sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.